What is up, everybody? It's Slummy coming back at you with another build video. Uh, again, just like my Templar video, this build is going to be geared towards helping players get to that level to be able to do vet trials in vet maelstrom arena so this build does not have any of that type of gear and for all you magicka dps people no there is no julianos on this build i tried to kind of change it up a little bit because i know julianos is the ideal gear to go for but i wanted to make something a little different and actually this came out to be a pretty solid build so for my character it's a dark elf sorceress magicka dps build and jumping right into it here uh just make sure if you have a better build build that does not pertain to that type of gear post a comment um below uh i'm always looking for suggestions in this game there's like millions of different ways to build characters so i'm always i always love to see the how people come up with builds um and things like that and if you have a youtube channel post it too uh why not just make sure you subscribe first before doing that uh so anyways Getting right into it on my character here. Um, Sorceress builds, I, I actually thought this class was kind of difficult to get used to. Sorry about that, my phone's going off. So I actually thought this was kind of difficult to use at first. It does take a lot of getting used to, especially because a lot of the Magicka uh, cost is high. And there's a lot of proccing involved in certain times to use certain abilities. So with the same kind of situation, my front bar is going to be used for my single target DPS. My back bar is going to be used for my AOE damage. And I could tell you this thing just melts enemies. So with that being said, let's jump right into the build here. So first thing, my max magic on is about 42,000. My spell damage is at 2,600 unbuffed. My spell critical is at 41%. On my back bar, my max magic is about 36,000 because I don't have the Aegis bond on it. And then my spell damage is about 2,600 again. And my spell critical is about 32% because I don't have Mage's Light on it. Sorry about that. My phone's ringing in the background. You can see my spell resistance is pretty decent. My magic of recovery is very low, so we'll go over that. Uh, but once again, attributes, you jump right in, dump it all into Magicka. For my boon, I'm going spell damage, um, obviously. I also have a, um, for inner light, I got ma major prophecy activated, bound aegis, uh, if I pronounce that right, for the uh, minor resolve and minor ward, uh, but we'll get into that when we get into my skills. So for my, for my build, it's going to seem like I'm kind of everywhere, but I'm really not. So on my front bar, I have uh, two-piece spinner's garments, and that's because uh, once we get into the gear, you'll see why. So basically, the two-piece will give me a little bit extra magic, magic, uh, max magicka on my front bar, but I also have the absorb magicka enchantment that deals 2,600 magicka damage, but it also restores a little bit of magicka. Like I said, it's really hard to sustain your magic ability or hard to get used to if you're used to other builds. So that's kind of why I have this enchantment on there. On the back bar, once I flip over, I'll be rocking a five-piece martial knowledge. Again, with the absorbed Magicka enchantment, 2,600 Magicka damage, and some Magicka re restoring. Again, you could use whatever enchantment you want. The Berserker enchantment's good. Um, but uh, I have uh, also defending on this to give me a little bit of survivability. Um, so for my head and shoulders, these are the only two pieces that require vet dungeons, but with this build uh, You could substitute them for like another piece of martial knowledge or spinners and you should be able to run vet dungeons just fine But the head is we're going heavy on the helmet. We're going medium on the shoulders for the passives both have max magic enchantments both divines uh, the reason why is because we want that two-piece flame or shock damage and um Basically, the shock damage is going to be like an AoE damage or the flame damage, and it's going to deal 1,500 damage to all enemies within 4 meters every 1 second for 5 seconds. This actually does a pretty good amount of damage on these enemies. Lay this, once this activates, when you lay all your AoEs down, uh, it, it just shreds enemies. They don't even stand a chance. So on my chest, hands, legs, and feet, I have martial knowledge. Max Magic Enchantments. Make sure they're all Divines. You can also go with the, uh, what do I have on this one? The Infuse for the Armor Enchantment to increase uh, your Max Magic a little bit. Either way, you should be good. 
Uh, again, increasing Max Magicka does affect your spell damage. Um, but we're going to do Martial Knowledge. And when I flip to my back bar where I lay down all my AoEs, this basically will give me a chance to cause an enemy to take 10% additional damage on my next attack. That's kind of why I have it. My AoE is my strong point on this character. So I want to make sure that I have that 10% extra damage, um, which occurs every 4 seconds on this. So the only thing that I switched up on is uh, for my front bar I have... I'll be have I basically have spinners. So for my front bar, I have the two piece spinners for that extra max magicka. You could also uh, equip it with the five piece spinners. It's still a pretty decent set, pretty solid. Unfortunately, I did not get the divines for the spinners yet, but I will. But you want to make sure it's divines to add a little bit of spell damage. Also, the max magicka enchantment. For the jewelry, big surprise, we're going willpower. You want to make sure you have the spell damage enchantment on there. You want to make sure it's a cane for the max magicka. You could also put some magicka recovery, but I like to keep the damage up there. And the reason being is once you have the three three set, you have that 186 spell damage. The two set gets you that little bit of extra magicka. So we're going to jump into the skills here, and then we're going to go into the champion point. So for the skills on my front bar, again, this is my single target bar. I have force pulse. This thing is an absolute must in terms of destruction staff abilities. It's a good spammable ability. And it also creates the 3000 flame damage because I have my flame staff activated. And it also up to two nearby enemies will take an additional 3000 damage uh, if they were already being affected by burning chills or concussed status effects. So the, the really good ability to have. Crystal Frag, this is a little different. Uh, it costs a lot of magicka and it's a little different on how you use it. Basically, when you want to use it, don't use it just to use it. Use it when it procs, and when it procs, uh, basically your hands will grow purple and you'll have little crystal shards spinning around your hands. That's when you want to use it. And the reason is because it takes a lot of magicka to use, and the animation time is very long. But by letting it proc, you'll deal 10% more damage, and it costs 50% less magicka. So make sure you only use that when your hands glow purple and it procs. Harden Ward, uh, every magic character, uh, if you're doing light armor, you need some way to survive, and I love the damage shields. You could do the Harden Ward, which absorbs 15,000 damage, or you could use the light armor ability, which does a, a shield over you that absorbs damage as well, but I like the Harden Ward. Uh, again, this is for survivability. This helps with world bosses, and uh, if you get stuck in those dungeons with those healers that just don't want to do the work, then this is a really good ability to have. Uh, inner light obviously to increase my spell critical um, Also when it's slotted it, my max magicka increases by 5% and I gain major prophecy uh, Which increases my spell critical which I just said so again You can put this on your back bar as well The beautiful thing about this is you don't actually have to use it. You just need it on your bar as a slotted ability So um, this is good for spell critical I also have Bound Aegis, and the reason I have this is because it grants me Minor Resolve and Minor Ward, which increases my physical spell resistance. So I do want to have that because, again, if you're stuck in a situation where you don't have a good healer, you want to make sure you have a chance to survive, and every little thing helps. Also, it increases uh, the armor increases your Max Magicka by 8%, so this will add a little bit more Max Magicka to a build that already uses a lot of Magicka cost for the abilities. The ultimate, I'm going with the Destruction Staff Ultimate. Obviously, this is one of my favorite ultimates to use. This is, uh, you could substitute it with Shooting Star from the Mages Guild. Unfortunately, I did three weeks of grinding for skill points, and I still have not unlocked the Mages Guild ability yet, but this is a good substitute for it. Uh, on my back bar, again, we're going to go Fury Rage as my ultimate from the Destruction Staff. Um, Haunting Curse. This, this ability is a little tricky as well. So basically, once you put it on an enemy, do not use it again until you hear the second explosion go off. And the reason why is because it'll put 5,000 5, damage uh, to all and other nearby enemies for 3.5 seconds. Um, but it'll the second explosion will deal 10,000 magicka damage on the target and 5,000 magicka damage to all nearby enemies. I like how this horse is just all up in my grill here. Um, so on my back bar you can substitute this for Mage's Light, but I have Anthropy, which when activated it's going to help with your healing a little bit, and it's also going to increase your spell damage and grant you major sorcery. So again, this helps to, to deal a little bit more damage. This is good to use when you start laying down your AoEs, and it should also last until you switch over to your single target. 
Uh, Mage's Wrath, I have basically, this is my kind of spammable single target on the back bar. This calls down lightning, but only use it when, I, I suggest, I wouldn't say only use, suggest using it when enemies are 20% or below 20% health. Uh, because then it'll deal an extra explosion causing 11,000 shock damage and 4,000 shock damage to enemies nearby. So this is, again, kind of similar to an AoE type effect, only the single target takes the brunt of the damage. Obviously, Blockade of Storms from the Destruction Staff, because this thing is just a beast. All Magic of Destruction Staff users have to use this for AoE. It's absolutely an awesome ability. And then also Liquid Lightning for your AoE. When you drop Liquid Lightning down with your Blockade of Storms, I mean, enemies just melt. And if you throw your Haunting Curse on top of that, they don't stand a chance. I mean, they'll die within seconds, maybe even just like a second or two. And the reason why I use this is for one, it causes a lot of shock damage every one second, but also your allies can use it and deal 8,000 shock damage to enemies near near the ally. So this is good for dungeons. This gives an ability for the tanks to use while they're up close and personal uh, with the bosses. So for my passives, Dark Magic's all maxed out. Uh, Daedric Summering, read, like I, I initially started this character as a pet build and then kind of switched it midway through. So only use the passives pertaining to non-pet active abilities because obviously a pet active ability is not really gonna help you much and it'll give you extra skill points to dump into things that you need. Storm Calling, again, all maxed out. Uh, Destruction Staff, all maxed out, obviously. Light armor all maxed out. Medium armor, I have dexterity maxed out, so this will increase my weapon critical rating. Um, Windwalker, I have maxed out because it helps with my stamina recovery. On magic builds, we always suffer for that, and it reduces a little bit uh, on the soft, uh, or I'm sorry, not soft, but when you dodge roll. So my current bonus is 2%. It's not much, but it's good enough. And uh, athletics, because it increases my movement speed during sprint with each minimum you know piece of armor this helps uh especially in the pvp zone it, it'll help you a lot to get away um heavy i have resolved to increase my physical and spell resistance again this is basically a light armor build so any little little help with survivability is good juggernaut to help increase my max health a little bit because i do have that healthy heavy helmet again it's not a dramatic increase but it does its job um then going down here, obviously the Mage's Guild you want all maxed out. Again, I haven't gotten there yet. It still needs some lore books, but you want them all maxed out. Your Dark Elf skill abilities, you want them all maxed out. And the reason why is because for one, uh, you increase your max magic on stamina by 6%. You increase your max magic by another 3% and flame resistance by 2,000. And then you also increase your flame damage by 7%, increase your frost and shock by 2. We have the spinner's flame staff, so yeah, we want to make sure we have that activated. And then um, this is a dual wield skill line, but we're not doing a dual wield build. Alchemy, obviously you want your medical use. Uh, so potions last a little longer um, and for the provisions this is going to be a must on pretty much every build is you want the gourmand to add the 20 minutes of duration um, you want the kind of sword to add 20 minutes of duration to your drinks um, but I'm not going to get too much into the crafting part I'll make a separate crafting video for that but those are pretty much the must in there now in terms of the champion points so they're kind of all over the place but not much is all all magic builds are pretty much going to be the same so right now i have 609 magic uh champion points and this is kind of where i dump the skills into uh, and i feel pretty good about this build i like it so i got 37 in the elfborn so far elemental expert i got 49 i'm probably not going to pump too much more into here if any spell erosion i'm at eight um you could always pump a couple more skills into the spell erosion uh, in the Atronach, we got Master in Arms at 49. I'm not going to do too much more into there. Um, also, for the Ritual, I have 59 in the th Thamma Thamiflage. I can't even pronounce that. I'm going to probably have this up to about 75 when I'm done with it. But that's all I'm going to put into the Mage. Uh, in terms of the Steed, again, you can kind of split these around everywhere because it, it's every little chance helps in terms of 
uh, survivability. So I have 32 in the Ironclad. I'll probably put a little bit more into there. Spell Shield, I have 55. I probably won't put too much more in the Spell Shield because I do have pretty good spell resistance on this build. I am pretty happy with it. Uh, Hardy, I'm going to dump a little bit more into Hardy, but you know you don't have to go crazy. Elemental Defender, I'm at 95. I'll probably pump this to 100. Thick Skin uh, to reduce the time effect damage. I'll probably pump a couple more points into here as well. Um, for the Lord, I have 5 in the Bastion. I'll probably pump a couple more points into here, but not too much more. Uh, in terms of the Tower, now I got 7 in the Warlord, 17 into Siphoner, because basically when I deal damage with the Light and Heavy attack, I decrease the animal, the enemy's health, magic, and stamina resource and recover by 4.3% for 3 seconds. So that little recovery is always nice to have on a character. For the Thief, I have 64 into ten Tenacity to increase my magic and stamina restore. I got 100 into Magicka Recovery Arcanist. That's pretty, pretty much all I'm going to put into those slots. And then for here, the Shadow, I have to reduce cost of tumbling it. Um, I put 13 into here. I'll probably put a little bit more into that. So again, uh, like for all my other build videos, I'll put gameplay at the end of this video. And and this is just to get characters, uh, your character, to the point where you can start running vet activities. I know there's better builds out there, but there's so many videos and all the builds kind of contain the same items. I wanted to help characters get to that point uh, so they can get that good gear I'll also post a link in the comments below it to where to find the specific gear sets. Um, so yeah, if you have, again, better builds, please make sure to post a comment below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe because I will have many more videos pertaining to Elder Scrolls Online in the future. It's going to be a weekly thing for me. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this video and everybody have a good day.